Right then, while we're in pre-season, it's worth us having a look at some of the youngsters who are going to be featuring. Obviously, a lot of the first-team players are involved into the Euros. We're not really expecting many of them back during pre-season. They're probably just going about going to catch the first couple of weeks of the season, I would think, for some, and for the likes of Marcus, maybe not even. So let's have a look at some players that you're probably going to be seeing quite a bit of in pre-season. What can we expect about them? Are they ready for the first team? What have they been doing recently? And I think there's no better place to start than perhaps a person who had the best loan last season and he plays in a position that United are absolutely desperate to fulfil and that is James Garner. Now for me, James Garner has got all of the correct attributes to be a fantastic footballer at the top level and he really shown that with Nottingham Forest last season. His calmness on the ball, uh, his ability to control the tempo of a game is a rare skill for someone as young as he is. Often you see a player 19, 20 years of age go into a club and they can maintain a tempo, they can keep up a tempo, they can you know, blend in with everybody else. But what James Garner does, Jimmy Garner does, is he sets a tempo and he changes the pace of a game. That was something that Michael Carrick was very good at, something the likes of Brian Robson and Roy Keane were very good at, knowing when actually this needs to go back to the defence and actually it's time to move, this goes direct and it goes forward. Those things are very hard to control. And those things are even harder to control in the absolute knife fight that the championship is. And as you've seen with the likes of Jude Bellingham, if you can thrive in the championship, you are a footballer, especially if you're coming through at a young age. You need experience, you need strength, you need agility, you need tenacity, you need endurance. you just got to be hard. The championship chewed up a lot better players than Bellingham and Jimmy Garner. And the fact that both of them so young have gone in and actually had an impact on that level. And then you've seen what Bellingham's gone and done both for England and for Borussia Dortmund. It tells me that Jimmy Garner would definitely have benefited from a Premier League loan this season if that's where he ends up. His ability to, tran to transform himself in the middle of a game from being a holding number six defensive midfielder to a roaming box-to-box -box energetic number eight that really suits the championship but it also probably really suits what Manchester United are looking for and he takes that number eight role and it takes it right to the edge of the being a box-to-box -box midfielder as most number eights or that role sort of describes he scores goals he creates chances and he does it with ease and he does it with a calmness a confidence and an ability where you go this kid's special and he's literally been one of the stat leaders for Nottingham Forest this season in every single department, which is no mean feat. To come in, be a loney, where it's, it's rough being a loney. No one really wants to take to you. You're there to take one of their mates' places, more than likely. They've not invested into you, the club, so they've got no real desire to see you do well over someone that they've paid money for that they might lose money on if you're not playing. It's tough as a loney. I believe Garner's got an extra year on his contract at Manchester United um, with an option to extend his contract beyond the 21-22 season. I think loaning him back out at this time is probably very good for, for both him and also for Manchester United as well. If United are going to look to move him on at the end of this season, uh, they'll get a decent price from him if he performs. But also, and perhaps more importantly... If he goes and performs, Manchester United have got a real player on their hands, which, and again, this is in his point of view, if he performs, he's in a position of power next season when he goes to sit down and negotiate with Manchester United and say, hey, I think I'm worth X, and I think I'm worth a starting place in the United team. A, a season long on loan at Nottingham Forest with a level of performance he put in last season, and he does that. Um, and it would be interesting to see how this plays out, but I think everyone's in a pretty good, pretty calm position with his contracts at the moment. Now, last season, it didn't go all completely rosy for him. He went out on loan to Watford, and obviously the talent of Garner was never in doubt by anyone involved at Carrington, and there was obviously a feeling before last season that he'd definitely outgrown the under-23s and needed to get himself out on loan, and United had numerous offers, and they, they settled on one from Watford, on the face of things, not necessarily a bad shout. And he's shown glimpses of promise at Watford. He started 12 of 20 matches that he featured in. Um, but he struggled to find top form playing in what's probably a little bit of a more advanced role than he's typically used to, under Ivic at first. Um, and then Munoz's arrival in December sort of 
signaling the need for a fresh challenge as as Ghana basically featured less prominently in the Spaniards' plans and United ended up terminating his loan spell early as a result. Now, that could have broke a lot of players. First opportunity out on loan, you think you're doing all right, the manager goes, now what are we going to do? But then came Nottingham Forest, and Ghana's real step into being someone considered as a top professional footballer came when he joined Nottingham Forest on loan. And he arrived at a club, they were three points above the relegation zone, uh, they managed only four wins in their previous 17 games. And to show the difference in what Ghana made, their points per game before he arrived was 0 0.96, and their points per game with him in the team was 1.37. Impact. Unreal. In the championship, he returned to the more familiar holding role um, under Chris Hewton, and he found some real form, and he showed that impressive array of passing that he's got, as well as reminding everyone that he's a threat from the edge area. He scored four goals. And his influence was key in Forest finishing the season nine points above the drop zone. It's well safe. He averaged um, 40.2 passes per 90 with an 81% pass accuracy with almost half the attempted passes made by him even being played forward or breaking the lines, which is massive. And something that we've spoken about in terms of a criticism of both Fred and McTominay is that they don't have the line splitting, line breaking pass that goes right through the thirds. Jimmy Garner does. Now, there's obviously other things that he has to add to his game, but that side, he's already got. And he's showing it in the championship, which is bloody hard to, to make that work as well. And due to the higher percentage of his pass play play, played forward, the chances created per 90 is 1.06, which is a baffling stat for what is supposedly a number six. You don't get number sixes having that sort of chance creation per 90. You just don't. His tackles per 90 is 2.07. Interceptions per 90 is 1.73. This is his natural position, and he absolutely flourished in it. In 20 appearances, he had four goals, 1.1 key passes per game, 80.3% pass accuracy, 40.2 passes per 90. Jimmy Garner absolutely thrived in perhaps the toughest league to thrive in the world. Now, I'm not saying the quality of the championship is great, but it's, it's a tough tough league and if you can sit in the number six and have time have space find the ability to create chances help stop chances at the other way add almost a 0.5 <laughs> per game think about this right almost half a point per game on average more when you play than when you don't for any player that's crazy. For any one player of the 11 to make a difference that much is insane, isn't it? Absolutely banana. If you had five players in a team that were doing that, that means you're making 2.5 points per game more. It's absolutely nuts to suggest that one player is capable of making all that stat, but right there in front of your face. He literally did it. Manchester United need a number six. As much as I would love us to go to the well of the academy and be able to pull James Garner up and say, you're the fucking man. Because I, and I've seen him captain this club at every single age group all the way up. And he's a leader. And he's always had something about him, a real something about him. I think after one more season of the championship, if it goes anywhere like what it just went like in the last six months... I think he could really put himself in a position to save United 50 or 60 million pound. I really do. It's a massive ask. It was a massive honour and privilege to be able to do that. And I think he could be a player that is capable of doing it. I think you're going to see quite a lot of him on pre-season. And I think the, the, the noise for getting him to play is going to get louder and louder and louder. And then hopefully he has another successful season on loan, stays injury free. And I think he could come back. And we all think we've got a 40, 50 million pound player there. Let's see how he goes. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What's the ceiling for Jimmy Garner? Do you think he could be United's future number six? And I'll see you in the next one. Laters.